All right, so we got a lot of information today when we're talking about the area of regions between two curves. Okay, so here's some of the important stuff. If F and G, let's change that to an AND instead of an ANF, because that makes no sense. All right, so if F and G are continuous with F of X being greater than <coughs> G of X throughout <coughs> the interval A to B, then the area between the curve y equals f of x and y equals g of x from a to b is the integral of f minus g from a to b. So in other words, it will either look like this bad boy right here. In other words, I can do the integral of the two functions being subtracted, or I can take the two inter I can take it apart into two intervals, two integrals and subtract the subsequent integrals, okay? And the reason why is this, and this is a really cool reason, okay, is because, okay, the area of the first curve, the, okay, looks like this. So the area underneath the curve looks like this from A to B, okay? So it's all of this stuff underneath here, okay? All right, now the area underneath the red curve looks like this. Okay, and this is obviously still from A to B. Okay, now as you can see, the, there's going to be some overlap with the two. Okay. Alright, so sometimes when you're trying to find the area of a function or the area of something, it's easier to take away some areas we don't know. Okay, so if you notice, there's some serious overlap here. So what I want to get is this. What I want to get is this portion right here. And the best way to get that is to take the area of the red function, which is above, which is greater than the green function. I want to take that area and subtract the area of the green function. And that way I can actually, it's almost like I'm erasing this. Okay. And I'm left with just the red part instead of the red and green part. I don't want the green part. I don't want that part. I want the area between the two curves. Now, if I wanted the area of the first function, the red function, I wouldn't do anything with the green function. But in order to find some really funky curves, because if you remember, the study of calculus is we are just looking at the area underneath irregular curves. And we're using Riemann sums. And we're using all kinds of stuff. But for this, uh, we're doing some really, really funky stuff, okay? All right, so that's just normal stuff. So in other words, if I'm just looking for the area underneath two curves, nothing really drastic. I'm just going to subtract the two functions inside of the integral or do the integral of the first function and then subtract the integral of the second function. Do whatever, have, whatever you feel like. Okay, now for intersecting curves, if you notice these don't intersect, solve for boundary points with equations. Okay, so you might need to solve some boundary points with equations. For changing boundaries, all right, make subregions and split up the integrals. So in other words, if you're doing the integral and part of it is, you know, uh, with the, the x-axis, the boundary is that, and then all of a sudden you have another function coming up. So like, for example, if we had something that looks like this, okay, let's say ours look like this, and then all of a sudden right about here we had another region okay so for this part okay so for this part I'm going to move it over a little bit okay for this portion right here okay I would do the area between two curves but then this portion right here I would just do the first function the blue function I would just do that and just find the integral of that okay from you know this part to this part okay all right. Now, for integrating with respect to y, make sure you solve for x in terms of y and then integrate with respect to y. So in other words, you'll be doing a dy, no, you'll be doing a dx dy. Okay, for that one. Okay, and that's with curves that are, that are better suited for you finding the actual... Uh, using the the y-axis as the boundary point so something that looks like this and it's like oh that's not very helpful but if you turn your head 90 degrees to the left or right you'll see oh that's just two curves again okay 
right and then you would just like oh right between there and there I just need that area okay just integrate with respect to y okay all right let's do some practice problems okay so on this one right here find the area analytically now I could have done this a different way I did it with respect to X and I'll show you with respect to Y so you can see with respect to Y alright but we have X equals Y cubed and X equals Y squared now if I solve with respect to Y in terms of X I would get these two down here and it, the equation would have looked a lot like this the blue being the X equals Y cubed and the red being X equals Y squared Okay. All right, now as you can see the boundary points, the intersection is going to be one comma one. So when I write out my integral, I'm going to be going from zero to one of this function. And this function I'm going to do with respect to x first. It's going to be x to the uh, one third minus x to the you would think it would be just one half and be it would be the reverse of that since it's the bigger one but this is just how it sets up okay so I have everything with respect to that so I'm going to go ahead and do my integral and my integral is going to be three-fourths uh, x to the four-thirds minus two-thirds x to the three halves okay and then I'm going to have my little integrand signed from one from zero to one okay and as you can see when I plug in one okay and I plug in zero and I actually do end up solving for it you're going to see that those are just going to turn into a bunch of ones okay so this essentially just becomes three quarters minus two-thirds and that should turn into one-twelfth yep alright and so this would all turn into about one-twelfth okay alright now if we turned our head to the side and instead we use these ones right here Okay, we would actually do the integral looking like this. Okay, still from 0 to 1, but we are actually doing it in terms of y. So this would be, now if we turn our heads to the side and we look at the function like that, it's going to be y squared on top now minus y to the third dx. Okay. All right, so when we actually set out to do it and work with it, this should become one third times y to the third minus uh, one fourth times y to the fourth, and then we use our okay to set up like this, and one third minus one fourth because if you remember, we're still plugging in ones. Okay, these are just going to turn into ones. And so, voila, we get the same exact answer. So it doesn't matter which order you go in, you can actually integrate with respect to x or integrate with respect to y. You just have to be careful about your new uh, boundary lines. You might have different boundaries than if you had with the other. Okay. All right, so now let's say you just had y equals the square root of x right here this is the top function and then this function is uh, y equals x minus 2 okay now if you notice if we go to this point I believe the point is 4 so let's say that we were going from 0 to 4 okay of this if you notice something really unique about this and here's 4 right here okay if you notice this actually makes a triangle so sometimes when you're doing this type of stuff instead of trying to do like the integral of both functions and then you subtract the lower function which would be like that sometimes you can do the integral okay from uh, f 0 to 4 okay and you can do it you can do it with just the plain old square root so we would have x to the 1 half okay 
All right, so that's pretty simple. But if you notice, when I subtract the other part, that's just the area of a uh, triangle. So if we just do the formula, the area is just going to be the triangle right here. So it's going to be like, I don't even need to do the integral of it. So 1 half times 2 times 2. Okay? All right. Now, as you notice, this stuff after is after the dx, so I wouldn't integrate that and get 0, like some of you guys were thinking. And what I would get, in fact, is 1 third x to the third. Okay? And I would evaluate that, and so this would be... Well, actually, geez, I'm screwing this up. This would be 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. Oof. Making that mistake. Okay. And then I would have from 0 to 4 on that one. And then whatever I would get, I would just minus 2 because that's just the, the actual area of that rectangle. Okay. Okay. And this will turn into 7 and 1 third. Oops, let's put the equal sign so that we can separate the two. Minus 2, which equals uh, 5 and 1 third, which is, what is that, 16 thirds. Okay? So some really cool stuff can be done, especially when you're using geometry, uh, simple geometry just to work with this. Okay? Now just remember, uh, be careful about working with this stuff. Just take your time, take your time, take your time just to be able to work with it. Okay? Alright, that is it for area of regions between two curves. I'll talk to you later. Bye.